There you go. All right, great. Let's go ahead and get this going. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for joining today um, as a continued um, uh, thankful forerunner to you. This is, um, I think, our fourth or fifth um, webinar session that we're doing every month on a different topic, usually a topic that one of you have told me you want to hear about. And, uh, you know, I'll reach out to NEC and we uh, discuss a way to deliver that to you. So today we're going to do the NEC biometric solutions. Uh, the other past webinar um, overviews are available on the Forerunner website. We record them for you. Um, if you ever need help kind of navigating where it's at, please just reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to show you where to go. Um, so again, today, NEC Biometric Solutions, um, Alan Gans from NEC on the biometrics team is going to cover that solution. I do have a couple slides like I do on every one of them just to uh, talk about Forerunner. Uh, my name is Stephen Spencer. I'm the Vice President of Enterprise Sales for Forerunner Technologies. Um, and here's our, our one slide on Forerunner, so I won't go into too much. We're found in 1988. Uh, our philosophy is simple but strong. Uh, customer satisfaction is our main priority, uh, and many of the customers, some of you on the call, could probably attest to that. So uh, we believe in treating customers the way you want to be treated. It's pretty simple, right? Uh, with that, we are at one of NEC's uh, Triple Diamond Dealers, which is their largest um, partner relationship. Uh, and I put in there a quote from uh, Larry Levenberg. He's the Vice President of Sales and Channel Marketing with NEC. And, uh, and as you can see, they see us as a valued partner of theirs as well, right? Um, there's many reasons why I love this company, but one of the, one of the main ones is this company has built, um, we're about 115 employees now, and it's mainly built around uh, people that have engineer technical background. Um, not very heavy on the sales part, um, more, um, more of the engineering technical background. So uh, our commitment to you is simple. We want to be seen as a trusted advisor for you, uh, similar to what we're doing now and what we've been doing every month for the past four or five months is, um, you know, come and try to educate and show you these new solutions and if it can be a benefit in your organization. Um, and outside of that, if you ever need any support or help or just questions with configurations or maybe budgetary pricing or just looking for a solution to address a problem, please reach out. I'd be more than happy to help. So with that, that's pretty simple. Um, we'll get right into the solution. And Alan, I'll turn it over to you. Uh, you yeah, just cool. tell me where to hit the button. Okay, and I'm actually I'm in WebEx now, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. Uh, so everyone should be able to see that momentarily. Is everyone able to see the slide that says Neofit, Neofit Solutions? Yes. Yes. Excellent. So what I'm looking to do today is really give you a, an overview on facial recognition and analytics, so some of the applications and use cases uh, in various verticals, uh, share with you where other customers are gaining value from this uh, series of solutions, and ultimately uh, allow you to think about how this technology might assist in safety and security and convenience uh, for your customers uh, in your operations and, and have follow-up conversations with you around some of those areas of interest. So quickly, NEC, uh, if you're not familiar with the company, we're based in Japan. Uh, the U.S. operations of, for NEC is based in Dallas, Texas, and I'm with the Biometrics Division, which is in Sacramento, California. Uh, you know, we are very focused on quality and leadership in, in all aspects of technologies and solutions that we bring to market, whether it's unified communications or biometrics, uh, and we really strive to lead the marketplace. And I'll share with you as with some of the presentation materials, you know, where we lie in terms of the competitive ranking uh, for both our face and fingerprint uh, solutions uh, in the marketplace. So facial recognition ultimately involves four key steps that technologically are very challenging, and NEC does them particularly well. Uh, the first step is finding a face. We can capture that face either from static images or live imagery from video. Uh, so static images, we can import existing databases into our system to make them searchable. Uh, likewise, we can take from live video, extract all faces in the field of view, and make those searchable as well. Once we capture the face, we normalize it, we run it through a couple pre-processing algorithms to assess the quality, 
and we output what's called a template. And that's that template that's then matched against a database of, of other templates. So we, although we start with a, an image, uh, we actually extract a template and match that template uh, in the database. Now, depending on the use case, you have different reactions. Uh, that's the output. So this could be providing uh, access uh, through uh, a secure checkpoint uh, into a facility at very high speed with minimal friction uh, through to being able to identify known suspects in a database or even identity theft, uh, identity fraud, uh, where someone might have multiple instances of, of identity uh, within database, but it's the same person. When I said that the technology is particularly strong, uh, it's important for you to know it's not me saying that, it's not NEC saying that. The U.S. government, NIST, has tested facial recognition extensively. Uh, and we have, since 2009, when we started participating in the NIST studies, and they come out with a, a, a new study about every two years, uh, we have not just led the market, but with a very significant margin between us and the closest competitor, uh, as much as eight times more accurate at twice the speed, which is phenomenal. Uh, the latest NIST test, uh, which is referred to as Faces in the Wild, is literally due out in the next couple weeks. And although the former results haven't been released, we've been told uh, that we'll be very, very pleased uh, with the, the performance of our of our algorithms uh, again. Really, what this is ultimately driving towards is a, an ability for us to implement biometrics and facial recognition in a, a larger subset of use cases and whereas in the past has been predominantly focused in federal and law enforcement related applications, we're now bringing this forward into the commercial sector uh, and our customers are driving great, great value from, from these solutions. So let's look at a couple key use cases. And, and by the way, at the end of the presentation, we'll be able to open this up for, for any questions. So please uh, note that any, any uh, questions as we're going through the various use cases here. So the first use case is security. Uh, this is referred to as real-time screening. Uh, we have the ability to create a database of existing images uh, and in real time search individuals against that database uh, and most importantly send an alert via mobile device if it's a central station to individuals that can make informed decisions at the point of contact with the suspect. So let's say in your operations, whether it's a hospital uh, uh, or uh, any um, large enterprise where you have uh, databases of employees and perhaps you have employees that have been terminated and you do not want them to return onto property. Uh, you can import those images into the system at all entrances, screen individuals as they're coming in and if someone is matching against that terminated employee database, an alert is sent to the security guard in real time with appropriate instructions for them to take action. That's referred to as real-time screening. We also, just for your knowledge, have the ability to do post-event analysis where we can take an image. It may not be a, a, a good quality image to start with, but we have tools that allow you to improve the quality of the image, but being able to search against your database to find that individual. So again, going back to that employee example, let's say you have an incident that occurred and you have a image that's captured of someone off of your CCTV system. It may not be a, a perfect quality image, might be a profile, we can actually rotate that to frontal, search against your employee database, and identify the person within, within the uh, database. Uh, it's an investigative tool. This is used widely by law enforcement today. I'll give you some examples uh, towards the end of the presentation on how law enforcement is using this capability, um, but a, a very strong uh, ability for you to uh, drive value out of your existing databases and help solve uh, criminal uh, activity and uh, identify known suspects. The technology can also be used for internal fraud, uh, for instance, on the employee onboarding process. Uh, so would it be of interest to know when you hire someone, were they previously hired, fired, and are now trying to be rehired under an alias? Again, we can import that entire database of employees you currently have, whether it's a 100,000 or a million employees, uh, and make that data searchable so as you add new employees to your roster, uh, you can determine or, or confirm that there's only one unique identity within that database. This, by the way, is the same thing we do regularly with uh, identity documents. Uh, so for instance, uh, Arizona Department of Transportation, uh, when you apply for a driver's license, 
that image is searched against the database looking for duplicate records. Uh, and if there's a duplicate record, there's a procedure and process for them to follow to determine it might be a legitimate reason, and maybe perhaps you had lost your license and had recreated it, uh, or perhaps it's an indication of fraud uh, where people are creating multiple identities uh, off of a, uh, a, a breeder document. This technology is also uh, used extensively for high throughput access. Uh, and I'll give you an example. Uh, Universal Studios in Japan uses this technology at all front entrances for their season pass holders. Uh, they are recognizing today about 700,000 people per year coming into the park. Uh, and what's interesting is that Universal had two key objectives. One, they wanted a, a very secure solution, uh, but also they wanted an initial wow experience for their guests. And you have to see people's reactions. They're literally all smiles because it's a, it's a cool, fun technology. So in your operations, in your facilities, uh, at your entrances, uh, you probably have credentialed uh, staff today. You give them a, a barcode, a mag stripe, but are you tying that individual to the identity? And if I give my card to Reggie, is Reggie going to be able to enter the facilities uh, under my uh, identity? Uh, by tying this to a biometric, and in particular facial recognition, now you're doing dual factor authentication, not just authenticating the credential, but authenticating or tying the individual to that credential. And the benefit of facial is that it's, it's frictionless. Uh, you don't have to do anything other than look at the camera, uh, and you can very quickly enter the facility without any interruption. We're also involved from an analytic standpoint to determine the transit time it takes people to move through facilities. And we're able to do this by anonymously uh, identifying people as they pass through multiple checkpoints uh, or multiple cameras. So for instance, this is used in airports today where we want to determine how long it takes someone to come into the airport or exit the airport. Uh, and government agencies have uh, certain uh, requirements uh, from a timing standpoint so that passengers are coming into the terminal quicker so they can spend more time shopping uh, or requirements for them to exit the airport faster uh, so that they can process more travelers. Uh, so we can determine the transit time uh, and present that back in very meaningful dashboards for management uh, to understand how customers are utilizing facilities. And finally, uh, so you're aware, uh, we also have a, a marketing aspect of this. Technology, it's not doing recognition, but we're able to actually estimate the person's age and gender and engagement. Uh, so with digital signage, for instance, uh, we can determine or estimate whether someone's a male or a female, determine or estimate their age, and deliver content intelligently based on the demographic that is standing in front of the screen. So if you're a male in your 60s, you might get a different set of messages or products offered to you than if you're a female in your, in your 20s. Uh, we can also determine the engagement, so how long is the person standing there? Uh, are they actually looking at the display, or perhaps they're just uh, standing in front of uh, the kiosk and, and their head is pointed in a different direction. So very useful analytics, almost, almost Google Analytics for the real world. So let me, let me stop there for a moment uh, and open it up for uh, any, any initial questions that you might have. And is, is the line open for, for questions? Yeah, Reggie, it's wide open, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody? Yeah, nothing for me. Okay. No questions here. Okay. Very good. So let me just share with you a couple. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, buddy. Okay. Let me just share with you a couple of case studies. Uh, so I had mentioned law enforcement's use of this technology. Uh, NYPD is a very active user. Uh, they predominantly use this technology in a post-event mode. So when they capture an image from, uh, say, a street camera, uh, they can take that image, search against the database, and bring up a candidate list to focus their examiners on, on individuals of, of greatest interest or, or threat. Uh, this is a little dated, but when they last publicly disclosed their, their performance, they had over 400 arrests attributable to facial recognition. Chicago PD, uh, similar application, 
the background image is actually a crime scene image. Uh, this was an individual who had stolen a cell phone off the transit system. They took that image, searched against their database of 4.5 million criminal booking images, and the lower right-hand image is the top image that came up in the database. Uh, and this actually resulted in a conviction, and this was their first conviction using facial recognition. Arizona, I had mentioned, uh, this is the uh, application where when you apply for a driver's license, your image is searched against the database. Uh, they're doing it today with about 16 million uh, images in real time. Uh, and you know, their biggest issue today, honestly, is just dealing with the amount of fraud that they're finding in the system through the use of our technology. Uh, taxi cab drivers are notoriously bad. Uh, you know, they might have 12 plus different identities in the system, uh, different names, different aliases, same person. Uh, they will rack up a number of tickets on a given license. They'll throw that license away and, and create a new identity and, and uh, continue operating. So we're, we're finding this instances of, of fraud in the system. Uh, Western Identification Network uh, is an example of a, a very large scale federated system uh, where we're providing uh, both fingerprint and facial recognition for criminal investigative purposes. Uh, this is eight regional Western states. Uh, and it's a cloud-based solution that is actually hosted on uh, NEC's uh, systems. One of the largest implementations of biometrics today is the country of India. Uh, there are actually close to a billion registered individuals. This is doing face, finger, and iris. And they add one million people per day into the system, just a, just a massive system. I'm sharing this with you to, to give you a sense for the scale uh, in which you know, we're able to operate. And Universal Studios, we have discussed, you know, in addition to facial recognition, uh, we're involved in uh, uh, mobile payments uh, where we're providing the ability for customers to conduct transactions uh, using their biometrics. Uh, so a very successful implementation. Uh, and this is really about customer convenience. So, you know, again, how do you get people into the park quicker with minimal friction uh, and, and have a, an overall very positive uh, experience uh, as you're increasing the level of security. So that's the formal presentation. All right, um, Alan, I appreciate that. And again, uh, everybody who's on, right, just uh, showing you a solution, get you a little, think a little bit about the possibilities around using facial recognition in your environment. Alan, do you have any um, anything you can talk about as far as in the healthcare industry? Um, you mentioned it earlier in the presentation, but. Um, any uh, case studies, you don't have to show it, maybe talk about it, or how facial recognition is being used in healthcare. Yeah, so we're, I'd say there's, there's two primary applications um, that are uh, either being actively um, deployed or, or, or considered today in healthcare. Uh, one is real-time screening at the entrances. Um, there have been instances where individuals have uh, either conducted a crime or, or threatened certain uh, administration. Uh, so being able to identify those people as they come in through the front entrance and sending alerts to the security staff is one key use case. The other is authentication uh, for, for clinicians. Um, you know, the uh, staff are uh, challenged today in, in having to manage passwords and, and the changing of passwords. Uh, being able to use a biometric and in particularly facial recognition where it's hands off, so in a sterile environment, uh, you can provide enhanced security uh, through a simple mechanism of looking at a camera uh, on either a tablet or mobile device uh, or PC has, uh, has key advantages. So being able to use this technology for authentication to improve uh, how uh, the staff uh, interacts uh, with the uh, IT systems uh, has strong value. And thirdly is uh, ultimately the ability to recognize patients uh, as part of everything from the uh, dispensing of, of medication uh, or access to key areas. Uh, you know, so wherever you need, you have the desire or need to uh, authenticate other staff or patients uh, in a very secure uh, and hands-off frictionless uh, environment, this has strong value. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Does anybody else uh, have any questions for Alan while we still have them? No, sir. No questions? Okay, all right. Well, we recorded this session. It'll be on our website. If you have any 
uh, troubles getting to it, please let me know. If you have any questions or need follow-up, uh, just give me a shout. Um, Alan, I appreciate your time today. Uh, Reggie, thank you My for pleasure. helping set, set this up. And uh, we'll go ahead and end the call and give you 30 more minutes. I appreciate it. Very good. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you.